Do you know the difference between a push in and a zoom in? Or between a dolly back and a zoom out? And what the heck is a dolly zoom? Better yet, are you capable of indicating these shots in your storyboards? Well, if the answer is no to any of these questions, then stick around because I'm gonna break down all these shots for you so by the time we've finished, everything will be crystal clear. Welcome everyone to Beyond the Process. I am Lance Laspina, and with over 30 years experience having storyboarded films, video games, and commercials, I've had to learn how to properly indicate all of the various types of shots in the filmmaking process. One of the main qualifications of any storyboard artist is the ability to clearly indicate camera movement. And in this kickoff video, which will be part one in a series in which I break down almost every possible shot, I'm going to be covering camera movement both towards and away from the subject. Okay, let's get started. The first type of shot I want to discuss with you today is called the push in, which is also often referred to as the dolly in. This occurs whenever the camera physically moves forward towards the subject. Now this camera movement could take place in a number of ways. For example, you could use a dolly on tracks to push in towards the subject, or perhaps a steady cam, or even a crane or jib arm. There are, of course, more ways to create this shot, but these are the most popular ways of doing so. A push in ultimately changes the perspective and the depth of the scene as the camera physically moves through the space. As a result, the relationship between foreground and background elements shifts, creating a more natural and immersive feeling. Now you might be wondering, okay, I get it, but what effect does a push-in shot have on the audience? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look at some examples and how it's being used. In this first shot from Raiders of the Lost Ark, the camera slowly pushes in on Indy as he visibly struggles to calculate how much the idol weighs. The push-in puts us in his same mindset. In this next famous scene from The Godfather, Michael Corleone, has a great deal of internal conflict going on as he wrestles with the realization he's about to kill two men. The closer we get to him, the more of his inner turmoil we feel. Lastly, a push in shot can be used to focus the viewer's attention on something important, like these two shots from Casino. In the first shot, we push in past Ginger who's watching her boyfriend Lester leave in his blue convertible, focusing our attention on his departure and how it makes her feel. And in the second shot, we push all the way into Jennifer's hair bun, letting the audience in on a secret that there's something significant about to happen involving said hair bun. Because the push-in actually mimics how humans physically approach objects or people, it ends up feeling more natural and engaging. Okay, so now that we know what a push-in shot is and what purpose it serves, how do we indicate these in our storyboards? Well, there are various ways to indicate a push-in, all being a matter of personal preference, but all of them do involve the use of arrows. The first method I'd like to demonstrate is the one that I personally use, and there are two variations of it as well. As you can see from this example frame, I've placed arrows in all four corners of the panel pointing inward. This indicates that the camera is moving forward. Now, some directors are fine with leaving the frame as is, but others may want to see both the start and finish composition of the camera move. So now we have two further variations we can use. The first variation would be to draw a 16-9 rectangle within the frame representing the final composition. I then connect each arrow with a corresponding corner of the frame using a dotted line. Doing this further clarifies the starting and finishing positions. The second variation involves creating an additional frame to show the final composition. The easiest way to do this is to just duplicate the original frame and then scale up the interior drawing so that we're now much closer in, showing the final position. I then make sure to delete any areas outside of the drawing that are spilling outside of my panel. Now we need to number these panels as 1A and 1B in order to make it clear this is a continuous shot. If I instead number them as 1 and 2, it might be confusing to the director and the crew, 
as they may mistake it for a separate camera setup instead of one continuous movement. Okay, so that's the first method of how to indicate a push-in or dolly-in. The other two methods once again come down to personal preference and how the arrows are used. Some artists prefer to use two large arrows drawn in perspective on either side of the frame to indicate the push-in, while others may simply use one large perspective arrow coming in from the bottom of the frame. So there you have it. Now you know both why a push-in shot may be used in film, as well as how to indicate this movement in your own storyboards. That means it's time to move on to the next shot. Before moving on, I have one really quick ask. If you guys are enjoying this content and find it helpful, please consider supporting us by subscribing to our channel, giving a like to this video, and sharing our content with a friend. Shane and I have been working hard to grow this channel and could really use your support. So thank you very much. Okay, now back to the video. Now, this shot is exactly as it sounds. Essentially, it's the opposite of what we just talked about with the push-in. So instead of the camera moving towards the subject, we're now starting closer in and pulling back away slowly to reveal the surrounding environment. So what effect does a pullback shot have on the audience as well as the story? Compared to a push-in shot, a pullback has many more possible uses. Here are just three of the ways it could be used. The act of pulling away from a subject can create a sense of emotional distancing or detachment. This can be used to signify the end of an intimate moment or perhaps to represent a character's feelings of isolation or loneliness. A pullback shot can also be used to reveal previously hidden information or elements in the scene. This can create surprise, provide new context, or dramatically shift the audience's understanding of the situation. As the camera pulls back, it can reveal the true scale of a location or situation. This technique is often used to showcase the grandeur of landscapes or to emphasize the smallness of a character in relationship to their environment. Okay, so those are three of the many ways in which a pullback, aka dolly shot, can be used in film to affect the story. So now, how do we indicate this type of shot in our storyboards? Very similar to the push-in shot, we're going to use arrows to achieve the proper effect. However, unlike the push-in shot where we can kind of get away with indicating both the start and the finishing position of the camera by inserting a rectangle within the existing frame, since we're already starting so close in and pulling back away, a second panel will always have to be drawn. However, <laughs> keep watching because I do have a trick up my sleeve that I use where I only have to draw one panel instead of two, which will end up saving you time. I'll once again start with my preferred method, and that is placing arrows pointing outwards on all four corners of the panel. This clearly shows that the camera is in the process of moving backwards away from our subject. The second method to indicate a pullback would be to use two arrows on either side drawn in perspective, but this time making sure they're pointing out of the frame. And the third and final method is to use a large arrow on the bottom of the frame drawn in perspective to be pointing out of the panel's borders. Now, the reason why I prefer to use arrows in all four corners is because a single large arrow like this might be mistaken as an indication of subject movement, as if the subject was going to walk towards us and perhaps past the camera. But with arrows placed on all four corners, this leaves little doubt. Remember earlier I promised to show you a trick so you only have to draw one panel instead of two when indicating a pullback? Well, this will definitely save you a lot of time. Whenever I know I'll be drawing a pullback that requires two separate frames, I always draw the second panel first. This way, I can just duplicate it and zoom in for the first panel. Pretty sneaky, eh? Alright, let's keep going. The next two types of shots I'm going to cover today are the zoom in and the zoom out. Now, unfortunately, some people seem to mistake zooming in and out with camera movement like a push in or a pull back. And to be honest, they couldn't be any more different. Zooms not only visibly look different, but they also evoke a much different emotional response in a person, which will affect the storytelling. So unlike a push in or a pull back, where the camera physically moves through space, with zooms, the camera remains stationary, 
and instead the focal length is adjusted. Doing so maintains the camera's perspective while magnifying the image, and in turn the relationship between the foreground and background remains constant. Now the reason why this feels so unnatural to us when watching is because the human eye has no way of replicating this effect. If we want to see an object up close, we either have to physically move closer or use a device like binoculars or a telescope. A zoom in with a telephoto lens will also seem to bring the background towards the foreground, flattening out the image and decreasing the sense of depth. And in some cases, it may also blur out the background depending upon the aperture and length of the lens. Here's another way of looking at it. In contrast to a push-in shot where we feel like we're approaching the character, a zoom-in shot feels more like the character is moving towards us. While zoom lenses were invented in the 1920s, they weren't widely adopted in cinema until the 60s and 70s in which this technique was often used ad nauseum. This is largely because a zoom shot is often much easier and less expensive to pull off than a full-on camera move. But now, with today's technology being what it is, an amateur can produce a really dramatic push-in or pull-back shot using a drone. So aside from it being easier and less time-consuming, why else would a director purposely choose to use a zoom shot in place of a camera move? Well, if used subtly, it can provide just enough movement to bring life to an otherwise static scene, helping to build tension. Now the complete opposite of this is what's referred to as the crash zoom. This is when the camera either zooms in or out at a super fast speed, often less than one second. This technique can be used to heighten the comedic value of a scene, or to quickly direct the viewer's focus to a specific detail or subject in the frame emphasizing its importance. Director Quentin Tarantino uses the crash zoom rather exhaustively in many of his movies, having been heavily influenced by the films of the 1970s. Despite a zoom being quite different than a push-in or a pullback, you may be disappointed to hear that we indicate them the exact same way in our storyboards by using arrows. The only difference would be for a zoom in where I may slightly enlarge and blur out the background for the second frame, which demonstrates the final position of the zoom in. Other than that, I would just write a note indicating whether the move is a push in or a zoom in. So what happens now when you marry these two techniques together? Well, they produce a one of a kind baby known as the dolly zoom. Now, a dolly zoom is an in-camera technique that creates a disorienting visual effect by simultaneously moving the camera, which is usually on a dolly, either towards or away from the subject while zooming the lens in the opposite direction. So what are the reasons why a director may choose to use a dolly zoom? Let's take a look at a few of the many possibilities. To create a sense of unease or disorientation in the viewer. To visually represent a character's sudden realization or emotional shock. To simulate vertigo or a feeling of the world closing in or expanding around a character. To emphasize dramatic moments by distorting the environment around the subject. Now I want to caution that this type of shot should be used very sparingly. Otherwise it can become very repetitive and overbearing to your audience. Mostly due to the disorientation that it causes. So how would you even attempt to indicate this type of shot in your storyboards? Well, personally, I would use a combination of the methods I demonstrated to you earlier, which again involved the use of arrows. Let me show you what I mean. This time, instead of using only one direction of arrows, we'll be using two different types of opposing arrows. So for example, if the camera is moving towards the subject while the lens is being zoomed out, I would place arrows on all four corners pointing inwards just like I do to indicate a push-in. Likewise, I would also place two arrows drawn in perspective on either side of the frame pointing outwards. I would then be sure to denote all of this by writing a description either below or to the side of the frame. And now you know not only why these types of shots are used in the storyboarding process, but how to clearly indicate them in your own boards so that the director's vision is properly communicated to everyone who decides to view them. All right, that'll do it for today. 
but I'll be back in the future to continue this series with a brand new batch of shots, so I hope you'll join me then. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>